Welcome to our new home! Come join us as we give you a tour of our new fifth wheel. Let's go! When we sold our house in the spring of 2023, we already owned a 24-foot Class C motorhome. While it was great for fast moving trips, it didn't have the storage or space that we needed for full-time living. We bought a fifth wheel to live in, but took the motorhome on one last adventure to Alaska last summer since it got great gas mileage and was very maneuverable. Once we returned from Alaska, we sold it to some wonderful friends and now live in the fifth wheel. Before we show you our fifth wheel, we'll tell you a bit about our truck, which we've nicknamed the Beast. It's a 2022 Ford F-250, and we bought it new since there was so little difference in price compared to a used one. It has a 7.3 liter gas engine, which I chose because I'm more familiar with maintaining a gas engine versus a diesel. Angela mostly wanted heated seats and a pretty color. going from this <laughs> what we have dubbed the clown car <laughs> yeah, the little clown car to that the beast has four-wheel drive and averages around 14 miles per gallon when we're not towing and about nine when we are towing i added a decked toolbox to carry most of my tools and some gas cans and had a spray-in bed liner added to protect the bed of the truck we tow the fifth wheel using an Anderson Ultimate Hitch that has worked really well for us. We can hitch very easily and quickly. With the hitch on the higher of the two vertical placements, the fifth wheel clears the toolbox with a few inches to spare, which is great for making tight turns. Well, the model we chose is a Grand Design 150 Series Model 278BH. The BH stands for bunkhouse. This thing is 33 feet long and we have nicknamed her Tiny. Now, she's not a tiny RV, we get that, but compared to a house, she really is tiny. So we wanted to go with something under 35 feet long simply because we love national parks. We love camping in national parks when we have the opportunity to. And if you start to get longer than 35 feet, it gets pretty difficult to find spots there. We wanted to stay maneuverable and as nimble as possible while still being big enough to have the storage that we needed to full time. So the 278BH is part of Grand Design's 150 series. And the 150 is meant to designate that it can be towed with a half ton pickup truck. And eh, the RV community really doesn't buy that very well. Most people who have towed fifth wheels of this size are adamant that if you're gonna do so safely, you really need to have a three quarter ton truck, which is what we wound up getting. And the price difference between a three quarter ton versus a half ton truck wasn't gonna be that much. And we really didn't wanna find out when we we're going up some steep mountain pass, running our air conditioner wide open, that our truck was underpowered. We've been really happy with it. We've already towed it several thousand miles, and we've been very happy with the combination of the truck, with the hitch, and with the fifth wheel. Time for some numbers. This 278BH weighs about 8,700 pounds dry with none of our stuff in it, no water, and it has a cargo carrying capacity of about 1,500 pounds. Part of that is the holding tanks. This can hold 55 gallons of fresh water, 78 gallons of gray water, which is from the kitchen sink and then everything in the bathroom except the toilet which goes into the black tank and that's 39 gallons. This also has two 30 pound propane tanks. So even though this is only a 33 foot fifth wheel, which is on the slightly shorter than average side for fifth wheels, we actually have quite a lot of exterior storage. This is 
the passenger side of the pass-through storage that goes clear to the other side. And here's where I store lots of RV and truck cleaning supplies. I actually have a pressure washer. I'm kind of uh, nitpicky about that sort of thing. I've got a lot of spare parts for doing different repairs and things like that. And our Starlink router is also located in here. A little bit more on that in just a bit. This came with one sewer hose holder, but we actually have two waste ports on the other side. One for the bathroom and then one for the kitchen sink. So we really need two longer hoses to be able to dump both of those at the same time, which sometimes we do. So I added another sewer hose holder here and that's worked out well. This space was originally designated as an outdoor kitchen. It had a little dorm fridge uh, right here, and it had a griddle right here that ran on propane. And it had a nice little slide it would pull out so you'd actually be cooking right here. And it was pretty good for what it was, but we weren't really that familiar with griddles. We wound up taking all of that out, and it was pretty heavy. And we replaced that with this. It's a Traeger Ranger. It's a wood pellet smoker and grill. And it actually does have a griddle in here if we want to use that. And we absolutely love it. Every chance that we can, especially in the warm months, we really try to use this, keep the heat outside so our air conditioners don't work quite so much. And we love the food that we cook on this. Now we also store some extra pellets for the Traeger right here. And this is where I also keep our Champion 2400 watt propane and gasoline inverter generator. We've had this for a few years now and we absolutely love it. One other thing I do keep in here is the oil pan. I change the oil in my truck myself, keeping it frugal. This is a great place for me to be able to wrap it in uh, a bag, put it up here, get it out of the way so it's not touching anything else, potentially getting oil on anything, and this just keeps it out of the way. This is our rear storage that goes under one of the beds inside, and we call this the garage. So we have a fold out table here. We have a couple of dual chairs, so each one of these chairs will seat two people. That's pretty nice. I like to ski occasionally, and I carry my own skis and boots further forward. We keep a few little other odds and ends in here, some automotive fluids, some of our Christmas decor goes in a box here, a few other things, and lots of toilet paper. We got an amazing deal on some toilet paper. We got these rolls, look at this. This is Quilter Northern, right, good brand. Mega rolls, six mega rolls. We got these two years ago for $2 for a pack, $2. We got like a four year supply. And when we moved into this, we were like, what are we gonna do with our toilet paper? Do we sell it? And we're like, yeah, we're gonna take it with us. And we are still using it. And we should still be good for probably about another two years before we finally exhaust all of this. But it's better than money in the bank. But we can save money, and this is really light. It takes up very little weight. Why not? Our friends and family have had lots of laughs at our expense with all this toilet paper. But in truth, it's lots of little things like this, saving money here, saving money there, that's enabled us to live what we believe to be a very rich, abundant life while still being frugal. And it's things like this have enabled me to be able to retire at 42. So if we have to buy lots of toilet paper, I'm okay with this. This is the exterior access for our furnace, a 30,000 BTU furnace that runs on propane. And then here is our water heater, which is tankless. That's one of Angela's favorite features of this fifth wheel. It also runs on propane. And here is the other side of our pass-through storage. We've got a lot of stuff going on in here. This is where all of our plumbing uh, connections come into. This is where our fresh water comes into. This is where we then fill our fresh holding tank that holds at 55 gallons. This is where we dump our gray tank and our black tank up here. In the rear, we have another gray tank for our kitchen sink, and we dump that back there. And this is where I keep a lot of hoses and power cords. Also here is our electronic leveling system. So we can just turn this on, hit one button after we unhitch, 
and it automatically levels everything out. These stabilizers, there are four of them, all go down and it just levels itself out very nicely. We've been very, very happy with it. These crossbars here, there are three on this, two in the front and one in the back. These are part of the steady fast stabilizer system. And what these do is they anchor the fifth wheel to these foot plates and that dramatically reduces how much movement the RV experiences when we're inside. Otherwise, it moves quite a lot from walking around or even from strong winds. This is where we keep our batteries and our inverter charger and a few other electronics. We have three Battleborn Lithium uh, GC3 batteries. And these have 810 amp hours of battery capacity or about 10 and a half kilowatt hours. So that's quite a lot of power for an RV this size. Now those batteries are charged with this Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter charger. So when we're connected to shore power the way we are now, this keeps our batteries topped off. When we are not connected to shore power, this Victron charger then immediately switches into inverting mode and it takes the power from the batteries and uses it to power everything inside, including our air conditioner and heat pump. Another really awesome feature of this inverter is if we're connected to our generator or just a regular household 15 amp outlet, say we're camping near someone's house, some friends or family, I can actually tell the inverter, don't draw more than 15 amps, the most that that outlet can handle. And if we need more power than that for some period of time, it will pull that power from the batteries. And then when our power load drops below 15 amps, then it will turn around and charge the batteries back up. That's just so cool to me. I'm such a nerd. With the system we have in place, it actually works a lot like a hybrid vehicle where sometimes you're pulling power from the battery, sometimes you're putting power back in. It's very efficient and so far it's worked pretty near flawlessly. Also in here are three solar charge controllers. And those solar charge controllers take the power from the solar panels up on the roof and regulate it before sending that power on into the batteries. Welcome to the roof. Up here we have an air conditioner and our heat pump up there. We also have a couple of vents and we have 10 solar panels. This came with one rigid solar panel that you see up front there, but that wasn't nearly enough to cover what we really wanted. So I added nine more and we have a total of 1,750 watts of solar panel capacity. Now, we know we're never going to actually achieve that for various reasons, but so far this has given us the power that we needed when we're out boondocking, unless we're running the air conditioner or heat pump a lot. If we are, then we need to supplement what the solar panels can provide with our generator. But this works really, really well. I attached these solar panels to the roof with industrial double-sided tape. I didn't want to screw all of these down and put six holes times nine solar panels. Uh -uh. Putting all of those holes in this roof was not something I wanted to do. So I used that industrial tape. That secured them very well. But because with this kind of thing, I'm a belt and suspenders guy, on the front leading edge of these, where I could, I also put Eternabond tape. And that helps to keep any wind from getting under the panels and then potentially pulling them off. The upgrades to our electrical system with the batteries and the inverter charger and the solar system, all of that stuff was pretty expensive. And you might think, wow, that doesn't really jive well with their supposed frugalness. But in truth, we like to boondock. We like to dry camp rather than just having to go from one full hookup campground to the next, which can get pretty spendy. Some people like to do that. We would rather save money. So by investing more money in our battery system and solar panels, and then augmented all of that with our generator, this so far has really enabled us to be able to boondock 
just be able to camp out with no hookups quite a lot. And we think in the long run, that this is gonna save us a lot of money. This is Dishy, the Starlink satellite dish. And this enables us to connect to the Starlink satellite system and pretty much anywhere we get a good view of the northern sky, we can get pretty high speed internet access. This has quickly become the go-to source of internet for our viewers. Now normally we are mounting this on a modified flagpole system that's attached to our rear ladder. And most of the time that works really well. It's very simple. I don't have to get onto the roof to be able to set up the dish. However, in this situation, we have a lot of big trees that are really close to us, and I need to have the dish a little bit further forward so that we can get a good view of the northern sky, and it works very well. Okay, now for the fun part. Welcome to the inside of our home. This is our living area, kitchen area, dining area, all in one. The original floor plan came with a large U-shaped dinette right here in the slide, and it had a small two-seater sofa here under the hutch. And for us, one of the main things that we wanted was to have a comfortable place for each of us to sit, to be able to chill, to be able to relax together as a family and watch TV. And so we actually ordered this particular layout from Grand Design, and we each have our own recliner. They're very, very comfortable, and we're perfectly situated in front of the TV so that we can watch TV together. Well, since we had the theater seating, we didn't need the love seat that came with the rig, so we actually sold that. And this little table came with it. It matches our cabinetry perfectly and we use this as our dining area. It also converts into an area where we do schoolwork with Kaylee. It also converts into our workspace when we're editing videos. We can both sit here with our computers out and work together. And we found these benches on Amazon, which are wonderful because the table can move out and we can actually seat five people. We have two on each bench and then we keep a little folding stool in our closet so we can seat five people here to eat. And these benches are awesome because when you live in an RV, every little bit of storage space is important. So these have extra storage. This is kind of our, our office area. We have our, our pens and our papers and all of our little gadgets that you need in a junk drawer. And the other is Kaylee's Lego compartment. So it keeps everything nice and neat um, but easily accessible. This hutch is amazing for storing large items. We keep things in here like our backpacks, we keep computers, we keep lots of books and board games. We love playing board games. We do homeschool Kaylee and so I keep all of her school supplies in here. So every day we just pull out the curriculum that she needs for the day and we do schoolwork and at the end of the day it goes back and is hidden away but very easily accessible. These glass doors were kind of see-through at first and I don't like people being able to see my junk so we actually added some fabric to these doors and so you can't see what I'll be storing here. I do love taking photographs. I used to scrapbook and I had an entire bookshelf of scrapbooks which is just not conducive to RV living so I have since um, changed all of our books into Shutterfly books so we're able to keep all of our photos um, at our fingertips so we can remember all the cool trips we've taken. When we started decorating our home, I really wanted it to feel more like a regular house as opposed to living in an RV. And one thing that screens RV are the valances that they put on all the windows. So they're just these wooden boxes covered in fabric. They're very boxy, they're very bulky, and they really block how much natural light comes in. So we just took those off and I don't mind the shades just being visible like this. I think it looks a lot more airy. Um, we also replaced these. These had those little puck lights that are just flush with the ceiling. Nothing wrong with them, but I think these were 15 bucks on Amazon, so it just kind of makes it look more like a home. And I kill absolutely everything that is not attached to a drip line. I have a black thumb horribly, so these are just fake, but they do add a little bit of hominess to the area. 
And here is my kitchen. I absolutely love to cook. We love to entertain. So having a large space to be able to prep our food and serve food was very important. And I absolutely love this countertop. We have three drawers here when you first come in. And what we try to do is take our shoes off every time we come in just to limit how much dust and dirt and mud comes in. And so we keep the shoes that we use very often right here by the door. My wonderful husband installed some soft clothes gliders on these drawers so we don't have to slam them every time we access what's in there. Well, in order for this counter to be used as food prep, it has to stay pretty much empty all the time. So we installed some wire food baskets that are on the side of the counter top here. That's where we keep things like our fruit and our vegetables. We also put this beautiful spice rack here. Again, I love to cook, so I need my spices handy, but this one actually screws into the wall. So whenever we are traveling, we don't have to move this at all. Everything stays nice and secure even keeping things like paper towels off the counter, all of that helps. So this is just an adhesive uh, paper towel dispenser that we mounted here, so that helps big time. The other thing is our Nespresso pods. We drink Nespresso coffee in the morning, and this little gadget is amazing, and it holds 40 of these Nespresso pods, so they don't have to be out on the countertop taking up more space. So the few things that I do keep out on the countertop besides our coffee maker are my cooking utensils. And then Will and Kaylee eat toast every morning, so I found the cutest little three inch toaster on Amazon. So it fits up nice and snug up against the backsplash, doesn't take up a lot of counter space. One challenge when you RV full time is what do you do about drinking water? And when you stay in different places and your water source is constantly changing, sometimes the water can taste really bad. So Will installed a reverse osmosis system here. So all of our drinking water comes from this faucet. He installed it under the sink. And we have a pitcher that we keep in our refrigerator and we just fill our water bottles from that pitcher. So it's always good cold drinking water. We have a three burner propane cooktop and oven. I've heard lots of horror stories about cooking in a propane oven, things burning, it being really small. They have really started to design these a whole lot better now. We have plenty of room to bake and to roast. I've even made homemade bread in here and it turned out beautifully. We added a pizza stone that's the exact size of our oven and that just helps to distribute the heat a little more evenly and to prevent things from burning. The most difficult part of setting up my new kitchen was figuring out where to store pots and pans. There's not a lot of cabinetry in here, so pots and pans tend to be quite large, especially with the handle. So I was very excited when I found these nesting pots and pans. They are non-stick, so they're very easy to clean. I just line them with these little felt liners so they don't scratch whenever we are traveling. And the best part is the handles snap on so they can be used from one pot to the other, saves a ton of space. So I found this Ziploc bag holder on Amazon, so it keeps me from having four or five boxes to slide around um, in the cabinetry. And even in the drawers, we were able to buy some dividers that keep things nice and separated, and we use Corel dishes. They're wonderful, they're lightweight, and they don't break easily. Well, sadly, I do not have a designated pantry in my home, so this is my pantry and it works fine. One thing that helps dramatically is using these clear boxes that I just refill with our staples and that whenever I open the pantry door, I can see at a glance what we have, kind of keeps things from getting lost in the back of that. And we clearly don't have a dishwasher, so we do our dishes by hand. We do them three times a day to keep them from piling up. So we have a nice big tall faucet here, large sink, it works really well. And then we have a silicone mat that we just set our dishes on here so they can drain until our resident dish dryer, also known as Kaylee, can come along and dry them and put them away. And under our counter is where we keep our garbage can and I keep my handy dandy stool for us short girls that can't reach tall cabinets. And our fridge is a Furion 12 volt compressor refrigerator. It's just over 10 cubic feet, so it's uh, maybe a little over half the size of a residential fridge, but keeps your food cold. And we have plenty of room to store all the food that we need. We bought some plastic dividers to keep items from shifting and falling over whenever we are traveling. And then our freezer, while it doesn't hold the amount of food that our upright freezer did, it still holds plenty that we only need to buy about two weeks worth of meat at a time. 
And the biggest change we made by far in this RV is that this was originally a bunkhouse. So there were two full-size bed bunks in this RV, but obviously we have one daughter. We didn't need two beds. So we spent a few grueling days removing the top bunk from this room. And we added Wayne's coating to cover up the bottom two windows and the screw holes where that original bunk was. We painted that, caulked it to make it look like this was supposed to just be one bed. We upgraded the mattress that came with the RV with a Sealy Posturepedic mattress so she would be comfortable sleeping on it for years to come and I'm really happy with how this room turned out. So Kaylee doesn't have a ton of storage but she does have some dedicated wardrobe space in here. We added a few little organizers to the wall so that she can keep some toys in here, little jewelry organizer for all of her treasures and then she has two drawers for her pants and socks and things like that and then at the bottom she keeps some of her little toys. Well you've heard the expression you live you learn. We have this story in Kaylee's room. So all the rage right now in RVs is a company called Betty's and they make a special kind of bedding um, where your fitted sheet that wraps around your mattress is actually attached to the top comforter by a zipper. This makes the bed very simple to make in the morning. You hop out, you zip it up along the edge and it's nice and neat. And we thought that would work really well for Kaylee's room and it did except for one problem. Her mattress is surrounded on three and a half sides by walls. And so in order to be able to wrap the beddies or the fitted part of the beddies around the mattress, we had to physically, well, no, Will had to physically lift the mattress for me to be able to crawl under and pull that bedding around the mattress in order to get it nice and snug. And while that was a lot of fun, it got old very quickly and so we recently replaced the beddies with something called zip sheet similar concept except the fitted sheet is what has the zipper so we can simply remove the top of the fitted sheet and wash that and whenever we go to remake her bed all we have to do is zip it back on so what I've decided to do is just to keep the top of the Betty's comforter and just lay it on top of the fitted sheet she still stays nice and warm but the bed is much much easier to make Well, before we go upstairs and finish the tour, if you guys would please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our videos. Be sure to like every video that you enjoy. It helps us out a lot. And this is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean unlimited hot showers. That is something that RVs used to never have. You had a five, maybe six gallon hot water tank and it just wasn't sufficient. So thanks to our Furion endless hot water, I can set the temperature exactly what I want. And as long as we have hookups, I can shower as long as I want. It's pretty much epic. We made a few upgrades to this room. The original faucet was a black plastic faucet, which I know they do that to keep weight down, but it was really hard to keep clean. So Will installed a beautiful brushed nickel faucet for me. We also replaced all of the door handles and this is actually throughout the entire RV. They also were black, again, kind of heavy and we wanted to lighten things up. So we replaced them with brushed nickel handles and that really lightens up the space. And again, organization is key. I don't know where designers of RVs expect people to keep all their things with just a big open space. So we found these wonderful little things on Amazon. They keep all of our toothbrushes and toiletries nice and organized and within easy reach. And although I keep a stool in the kitchen to reach items in the cabinets that I can't reach otherwise, I didn't wanna do that in the bathroom. The fan that was installed here was a fine fan, but it was manual. So me being the short person that I am, I could barely reach it unless I was very much on tiptoe and Kaylee could not reach it at all. So Will installed an automatic fan. It has a remote control and all we have to do when we walk in is press a button. And so it opens the vent automatically. Another change we made in the bathroom is this originally had very heavy, very hard to clean glass doors and I, I can't handle the dirt. I just can't. <laughs> so we took those out and we installed a tension rod with a shower curtain. So much easier to keep clean and a whole lot lighter. We store our bathroom towels in here during the day so they dry in here and then we just move them into the hallway when we get ready to shower at night. And 
whoever invented this, I would just want to say thank you because finding out where to store your bottles in an RV, especially when you're moving a lot, is always a challenge. So this is made kind of a vinyl plasticky material and all of our bottles and shampoos just fit nicely and that's one less thing I have to move whenever we get ready to get on the road. We also store our hamper in the shower during the day and no, we do not have a washer dryer. This unit did not come with it and so we rely on wonderful family and amazing friends to let us do laundry. Thank you guys. We also added a coat rack here in the hallway. This is great for storing coats in the winter time, for storing my purse. If we have company come over, they can hang their things here. And then in the hallway, this room always stays wide open. All of the doors in our RV are pocket doors, which means they don't swing out. So that saves a lot of space. And welcome to our bedroom. The first thing we did in here was to replace the mattress with a good posturepedic mattress. The ones that come in RVs are generally designed for people to use whenever they are camping for a week or two weeks, not for full-time use. So that was our first thing that we changed. Well, the new mattress is about 90 pounds and so Will had to replace the struts underneath the mattress so that whenever we access our storage, it doesn't come down and whack us in the head. So thank you, Will, for that. We store all of our winter wardrobe up here, our coats, our hats, our gloves, and then we keep shoes that we don't wear quite as often here in the side. We found some metal shelving that we can use to double the storage space in these cabinets. And this is our wardrobe. Yes, ladies, this is all I have. And I share it with my husband, although I have the majority of the space. So our hanging clothes go here. Our folding clothes go below in these drawers. They are fully extendable. And again, we bought these organizers. So we learned that if you can start to store things vertically in drawers, you really double your space. This is Kenai, one of my very special stuffies. Um, I got him at Kenai Church National Park when I got to see real whales. If you can't tell already, I love stuffies. <laughs> It looks like they're exploding out of here. <laughs> With leaving our house, I thought that I was gonna have to get rid of all of these stuffies. Well, mommy and daddy said that I could keep them all. <laughs> so, this is where they live. You might be wondering where we're staying when we are stationary in the Spokane area and we have some wonderful friends who have very graciously let us lease a spot on their property. They have a lovely little farm north of Spokane. We have beautiful views of the surrounding hills and mountains and forests and the fields. It's quiet, it's very safe. We can just let Kaylee get outside. She can run around. We don't have to be concerned about her safety at all. And it's just a wonderful spot. We have hookups here and it's been a lovely setup, and we've actually already been here almost a year. Do we live in a tiny space? Absolutely. Did we have to sell 95% of our earthly possessions to live in this space? <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> was it worth it? Absolutely, it was totally worth it. Now I'm free from my job, I'm fully retired, which is incredible, so it means I get to spend a whole lot of time getting to put together videos for our friends, <laughs> and we really enjoy doing that. It's something that's a labor of love. He gets to spend time with us. That's what he really loves. <laughs> but we also then get to travel pretty much anywhere there's a road from here to there. And we love having the freedom, the flexibility. Again, like we mentioned in our last video, being able to go where we want to go to, stay however long we want to stay, that is something that is huge. And we know that we are exceptionally blessed to be able to live this kind of lifestyle. We know that this is something that very few people really get to do it the way that we can. And a lot of people have the desire to do it, but there are a lot of restrictions that may keep them from doing this, whether it's financial reasons or family dynamics or even health and mobility. We know that we are truly blessed. We've had a lot of people ask us, how long do you plan on doing this crazy lifestyle? And our answer is always until God tells us to do something different. Unlike a lot of people who are only planning on doing this for one or two years, for us, this is indefinite. 
and we hope to be able to do this for 10, 20 years until either one, we just get tired of it, mm -hmm. or two, our health doesn't really permit us to be able to do it anymore. We really do feel like this is what God has called our family to do right now. That's why we named our channel Call to Journey. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us today. And until next time, enjoy your journey.